Mr. Pascal Gabriel. How are you Hello. doing, sir? I'm good, thank you. And, and you're down in, <laughs> uh, down in France? Yeah, yeah, I'm working on the second album. It's coming along quite nicely. So this is for the Stubble Man uh, project, which is you, yeah, you, like a... you kind of cu coming out of the box, but still being like a one-man band. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This whole second album is about the, basically the move on to, and, and uh, it's very windy mountain. So a lot of the instrumentation is all kind of wind-based. So I, I thought I'd get a shooty box. I never had one before play the one with it and really like the idea of it but I just thought it would be rather than something rhythmical which you get with the pumping something really droney and just kind of naturally droney would work great so I basically well, I went to the DIY shop got a fan <laughs> wired it up into the into the back <laughs> of it um, and it's really works. It's quite. It's really quite cool. Oh, really I can't wait. It. I can't wait. To, I enjoyed the last album so much, Thank and that was much. involving like beaters playing these percussion instruments. It's absolutely fascinating. Thank you. Yeah, that's the live the live version. On the second album, I'll record them all. I mean, on the first album, I'd play. I actually played the parts uh, because the machines weren't invented yet. Right. Um, I kind of invented them basically for the second album uh, and for live. Um, uh, mainly for live it's to start with and then I thought well I've got them now I might as well record with them you know so then they work very well it's kind of feels a bit like having a band of percussion players playing with me in the studio when I improvise and try some ideas you know I just basically get the set of chords going with them and play with them sort of thing. The reason I'm so obsessed with bass drums is because I think you know snares and hi-hats are, are slightly more transferable you don't have to worry about how these are going to respond on different speakers whether it be an iPhone to, yeah. to a nightclub. Yeah. Every time I need like a, a hip-hop kick it's the sound I've used for maybe 15 years because mm. I know it translates. Is that something that you've found too? Yeah of course yeah I mean I've only got really one bass drum sound and, and I mean that's it you know I've used it for 35 <laughs> years. I couldn't use Use it before samples were invented but as soon as samples were invented i basically caught on on the idea that you know i needed a sine wave which is something that you always used to use in studios if you were mixing a band that had where the bass drum was badly recorded you'd put the oscilloscope you know the test basically oscilloscope on the desk 60 hertz to a gate triggered by the bass drum that was recorded and you'd have this 60 hertz low end on on any wow. bass drum you wanted and you you know if you had an external oscillator you could that oscilloscope then you can actually you know tune it tune it even you know but you could always do that with a harmonizer of course as well yeah. but generally 60 hertz seemed to work and you work with that you know if so you added this extra bass to the kick um wow. uh, but then when samplers were invented of course you didn't need that you just had a built-in sound wave in the sampler so you, you i used that was uh, my, my, all my kick really was was four different elements it had a click which was like a some, like basically the very front of an 808, you know, the little yeah. the, the spitty bit of the 808. It had a sine wave, and then he had a bit of um, TR 909, uh, like bass drum, the kind of middly bits of the 909, and he had an organic bass drum, which I can't remember where it came from. Maybe it was the Inspiral Carpets or something like that. Um, and it was just basically, I'd always have those four together, starting exactly at the right spot, and then decide which one I want and fiddle around until it sounded like the new bass drum that I wanted for this particular track. So would you resample it or just program it with audio? I'd program those four notes to play at the same time. It would be one note actually and all of them on the same group um, and they'd all play at the same time and then I'd mix it internally in the sampler. In those days it was I do an S900 or S1000, you know, and you just basically balance them up, tune each of them so it fitted the new track, this track that you were working on. Right. Or this artist you were working on, and that became their sound. That's absolutely fascinating. And do you feel that the the, the, the Akai's gave you a particular sound as well? 900 is, was really great. It was kind of the early 900 were really, I think they were 8 bit, weren't they? Oh, I think. right. Or 8 or 12 bits. I don't think they were, they, were, they weren't particularly great hi fi thing, especially in the way I work because at the time you had so much sampling stuff going on that even if you had 4S900 which is what we had when we did S Express and Mom the Bass, we, the studio had one, I had one and we hired two more and we had four discs full of, you know, the, all four machines were full and so you had to resample all the time to make more room so, you know, I'd, I'd say, oh, I need another clap now for this section and all four samplers be completely jammed so it, you could resample and give a little bit give yourself another couple of milliseconds to just stick another sample in there um wow. and of course that would that would if you resample it that lowered the 
the, 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 the quality, the, the audio. Now, now lower course. the quality of the audio, so you lost a lot of time. What is it that you're looking for in a kick drum? In a dance track, you want a certain amount of punch. You want, you want it to really feel it in your gut, you know. You want it to just feel it in the lower abdomen, I would say. Yeah. You know, that's where you want it. Um, but then you want also the roundness to move your butt as well. So it's kind of a bit of both. It's a bit of a punch and a kind of round bum, bum sort of thing, you know, that really, <laughs> that really makes you... So it hits you here and it makes you kind of want to, you know, stick your bum out and have a dance. I've always been aware of drummers tuning their tom-toms, but what I've not been aware of is engineers, and particularly remix engineers, tuning the drums to the track. Is that something that you're aware mm. of as well? It's down to ear, you know, it's down to what you feel like when you do it. Um, I don't think there's any formula for t in terms of tuning. Sometimes tuning sounds good, sometimes it doesn't. It's just a kind of trial and error thing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't think there's any formula of like, yes, I always tune my bass drum to, you know, the the fundamental of the track, or yes, I I, I never bother. No, I never bother. You know, I, there's a bit of both. I think. You know, in the eighties, early eighties, way before samplers were, you know, were used. Uh, we just used to use the 60 hertz from the desk and just give it a bit of bottom, you know. <laughs> this is something I'm going to try, yeah. Pascal. That sounds absolutely brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah. But you were stuck, of course, with the with the with the the frequency. You couldn't really change it unless you had an external lining up lining up device. You know, basically the 60 hertz was on the desk, so you could tune, you know line up the tape machines. Are there any kind of tracks that you've heard either recently or back in the day where you thought, my God, that's a really good kick drum sound? Oh God, drop it like it's hot. It's a fucking ace. I mean, that bass drum, it, that track is all bass drum, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. That's, that to me, that is like the best bass drum ever. It's fan so fantastic. There's no notes, you know, that, well, there's a note, but there's no bass line. It's just that, do, 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 you know, it's, yeah. it's brilliant. Yeah. The record. Brilliant stuff, Pascal. Well, listen, thanks so much for coming My to pleasure. talk about something so meta. Um, where where can we find out more about Stubbleman? On stubblemanmusic.com. You'll find all about it on that. I'm also a Stubbleman Music on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook.